Earlier today, I was reading some legal documents, and I caught myself thinking, you know, this attorney is relatively intelligent. It's well thought out. It's well structured, the argument. Then I realized that after all these uh, Maddox versus Dick Masterson lawsuit stuff, the standards have been set relatively low. I go anywhere, anywhere with you, cause you feel my mind. Today we're going to talk about Kokino's response to Maddox's original claim. Now, all the defendants are going to file a motion to dismiss. Most of them are going to file a motion to dismiss for lack of personal jurisdiction, saying that New York is the wrong venue. New York does not have personal jurisdiction. This, at best, should be argued in California or at all. Kokinos and his employer at Weber Shandwick really can't go down that line because they're in New York, so they can't claim lack of personal jurisdiction. They're going to focus on the merit. Today, we're going to talk about Asterius Kokinos filing of a motion to dismiss. In particular, we're going to be reviewing the memorandum in support of the motion to dismiss. Basically, all the legal arguments of why none of the claims have any merit, why this entire case should be dismissed with prejudice, meaning that he would not be able to refile again and or fix it in any way. Plus, you should be awarding me attorney fees for all the problems that I've had to go through. So this is the document, the memorandum of law in support of defendant Asterius Kokino's motion to dismiss. Let, so let's jump right into the response to the first claim, which was for invasion of privacy. If you remember, the invasion of privacy claim in New York has nothing to do with privacy. It's effectively a misappropriation of somebody's image, kind of a trademark infringement, the idea that using somebody's image in an advertisement. First, First, plaintiffs are resident of California, not New York, and therefore the statute does not protect them. New York does not have an interest in protecting the privacy rights of California citizens and residents like the plaintiff. So the first point here is that the law is designed to protect New York uh, residents. And the plaintiffs here are not New York residents, they're California residents, therefore the law does not apply to them at all. Second. Mr. Kokino's alleged conduct is not solely for commercial purposes. Instead, Mr. Kokino's alleged conduct directed at plaintiffs who admit that they are, at minimum, limited purpose public figure is protected First Amendment speech. Effectively, what he's saying is that the statute is to pre designed to protect you when other people are using your name and likeness in promoting product, right? In slapping your name on top of a product. This is not what's happening here. I'm permitted to talk about you, to criticize you, to create satirical bits about you. Nobody has to like it. You may not like it. The court may not like it. Everybody might think it's in bad taste, but it's protected free speech. In no way am I taking your image, slapping it on a product, and then using your image to, to uh, make money off of it. I'm just criticizing you, and the very fact that I'm making money off of it does not bear at all on this particular statute. Second cause of action, defamation. The second cause of action alleges that Mr. Kokinos defamed plaintiff and that such statements were per se defamatory. First, the defamation cause of action must be dismissed for failure to plead with particularity required by CPLR 3016A, which provides in an action for libel or slander, the particular words complained of shall be set forth in the complaint, but their application to the plaintiff may be stated generally. So the first rebuttal to defamation is you never actually said what the defamation was. What did I say that was defamatory? What statement of fact did I lie about? When did I say it? To whom did I say it? Where was I when I said it? That's never actually pled in the complaint. Second, plaintiffs have not identified any statements of fact that Mr. Kokino stated or published about plaintiff. And second, you've never actually claimed that I wrote down or published or spoke any statement of fact. Remember, I can voice my opinion about you as much as I want to. That's not defamation. You've got to point to statements of fact. Statement of fact that then you can say are false. Third cause of action, misappropriation, unfair competition. That's kind of a strange cause of action, claiming that the defendant is somehow unfairly competed against the plaintiffs. New York recognizes two theories of common law unfair competition, palming off and misappropriation. First, as to palming off, that tort is the sale of goods of one manufacturer as those of another. Plaintiffs do not allege that Mr. Kokinos is manufacturing any product and labeling or marketing them as the products that the plaintiffs are selling. This is not a palming off case. So the attorneys are pointing out that one way of proving un unfair competition is to say that through our action, the defendants are basically misleading the consumer, right? They're putting uh, the, the plaintiff's face on a product, making them believe that the product that they are selling really belongs to the plaintiff. Because I'm criticizing you, that's that's not unfair competition. I'm not pretending to be you. I'm not pretending that my products are you. I'm not trying to sell a book that, that says, no, no, this book is really by uh, Maddox, but is in fact by Kokinos. 
it's at no point am I deceiving the consumer as to the source of the product. Second, misappropriation usually concerns the taking and use of plaintiff's property to compete against the plaintiff's own use of the same property. Mr. Kokinos is not alleged to have stolen the plaintiff's skills or labor in bad faith, nor does plaintiff have an exclusive right to their fans or positive public opinion. So in the second point, the attorneys are pointing out that another way of, of getting to unfair competition is to say that I'm taking some property of yours and using it. What am I taking here? Am I taking your fans? They're not properties of you. You don't have any exclusive claims to them. Now, the one thing they did not address was the claim that somehow the defendant gained access to or maybe have taken some sort of a fan list or consumer list or maybe sponsorship lips, something that would have been in some way confidential or they don't have any rights to. It was badly pled. There was never really any any real statement that there, this was somehow kept secret, that they had no access to it, they had no rights to it. But they made those kind of vague allegations and maybe they should have uh, discussed it here, but it's not a flaw because it's so badly done on Maddox's side. Fourth cause of action, intentional infliction of emotional distress. The element of this cause are extreme and outrageous conduct intent to cause or disregard of a substantial probability of causing severe emotional distress, the causal connection between the conduct and the injury, and severe emotional distress. So now we're talking about intentional affliction of emotional distress, and the basic of it is that something outrageous had to have happened. Not that you feel badly about it or it was in bad taste, but outrageous, something outside the bounds that normally people would do. But here we're talking mostly about criticizing somebody, making fun of them. Is that amounting to outrageous behavior? I suppose at some level, if it went on and it amounted to something extreme, but there was no indication of that. There was definitely not pled that way. There was no particularity about what Mr. Kokino said or did not say over time that amounted over time to something so outrageous that really it would have hurt the, the a normal, reasonable person. That was never pled that way. It was insinuated, but never pled that way. And then let's assume that you find some of the statement that they, he was talking about, some of the statements were outrageous, like rape and death threats, even though there were really no rape and death threats made. But at every single time when the plaintiffs alleged that, they were talking about fans. At no point did they make any connection between what Kokino said and any death threats. Fifth tortious interference with a contract. In this case, if you remember, the allegations are that the defendants got all their fans together to effectively attack the advertisers and sponsors of the plaintiff's channel, and as a result, they left. The problem here is that that's not sufficient in order to allege interference with the contractual relations, because the primary things you gotta start with is you've gotta prove a breach, meaning it's if, if uh, your sponsor decides not to renew a contract, if it's, you know, Every month he does it's month to month. He's like, no, I don't longer want to advertise because of what is being done to me online. That's not the basis because it's not a breach. If they tell you, you know, you have a year long contract, but I can terminate it at any time by giving you 30 day notice, then it's not a breach of the, of the agreement. Basically, you'd have to find a situation where there is a year contract. They can't get out of it unless there's some sort of a major breach on my side, which I didn't do, and now they're stopping the the agreement, they're stopping work with me, which is in clear violation of the agreement. So there was an actual breach of an agreement because of something done by somebody else. Then it would be the basis, and that was never alleged. At most, it was alleged that there was no that the sponsor no longer wanted to work with them, or no longer wanted to renew the deal, or didn't want to provide any more advertisements. That does not work when it comes to this cause of action. Plaintiffs failed to state a claim because Mr. Kokino's alleged conduct was not directed at those people with whom plaintiff had a contract. Mr. Kokino's alleged conduct was directed at the plaintiffs and or Mr. Kokino's fans, but not at the sponsors or publisher. And the second point was at no point did you actually say, you know, Kokino sent this statement to the sponsor. Kokino's did this to the advertisement. That's never alleged. At most, you can point to, you know, him actually doing his bit toward the fan or trying to direct some language toward you. At no point was it alleged that Mr. Kokinos actually did something toward the, the, the advertisers, toward the sponsor. He sent them something. He said something. He told them something. That was never alleged. Sixth cause of action, tortious interference with business relations. If you remember in this cause of action, we're not talking about contract. We're talking about 
business relationship. And the allegation being that Kokinos interfered with the relation between the fans and Maddox. Merely identifying fans, developers, and other individuals and companies is not sufficient to identify the prospective business relationship with whom Mr. Kokinos allegedly interfered. Those persons must be specified but were not. So first, you didn't really identify who you had the business relationship with. You said fans. Who are the fans? Identify an individual with whom you had a business relationship. Otherwise, you can't say how I interfered with that relationship. Nor was Mr. Kokino's alleged conduct the but-for reason plaintiffs do not have relationship with these identified third parties. Second, you really didn't connect the dots. You didn't show what, how, what I did actually interfered in a business relationship, right? So first, you identify the business relationship with the parties, and then you say, look, you said this as a result, that one prospective partner didn't want to deal with me. You said this as a result, these prospective fans didn't want to watch my shows and I didn't get paid through advertisements for their views. You've got to draw those dots together, got to connect everything. Lastly, the claimant must allege that the respondent used wrongful means, which generally are acts that would be criminal or independently tortious. And third, it's not enough that you say that I said something, because... That's what competition is about. I'm allowed to, to take clients away from you, to take customers away from you, to take fans and potential advertisers and sponsors away from you. Ultimately, you gotta say that I did something wrong. Something I said maybe it was criminal, maybe it amounted to some measure of illegality, some wrongful, some measure, but you never said that. Basically, what you're, you're pointing to is the fact that you didn't like the way I was competing, conversion. Conversion is basically stealing. A conversion takes place when someone intentionally and without authority assumes or exercises control over personal property belonging to someone else, interfering with that person's right of possession. Plaintiffs allege that defendants generally converted a variety of unspecified documents and information. So as we said before, there are these vague allegations that somehow the defendants, and that's clear who are the defendants, had access to some proprietary information, some confidential information, something dealing with lists of customers, li list of viewers, list of sponsors, list of fans, something like that they then used to build their own business on top of. But there was never really that kind of allegation, just some broad uh, strokes about it. You know, what kind of information, what that information contained, how was it stored, was it uh, confidential, was there a confidentiality agreement, was there understanding about who it belongs to, did you accumulate it, was it something that is otherwise not accessible to the public. All that information was never really provided in the complaint. Second, plaintiffs have failed to allege necessary elements of a claim for conversion, a demand to Mr. Kokinas for the return of the property which was refused. And in the second point, the attorney says, You've got to show that you've asked for that property back and that we refuse to give it to you. But what property did we take away from you? Did we take away your fans? How are we going to return that to you? Did we take away your sponsors? How is that going to be returned? Now, that you could allege that what was taken were the list or access to some confidential information, even though that was never alleged here, and that somehow you would ever either have to destroy it because... Uh, you should not have access to it or you should stop using it and maybe you should return it in the event that I don't have access to it. So it could be pointing to the actual list, not the fact that somehow as a result I didn't have access to the fans and, and to the sponsors and I lost them. So it could be that. The problem is, again, it was never pled that way. It was never discussed that way. They could have built an argument like that if they pled it accordingly, but they never actually did. Eighth cause of action, false advertising, deceptive and misleading business practices. So this is another strange claim of false advertisement. In order to obtain a claim under General Business Law 349, a plaintiff must allege that a defendant has engaged in a consumer-oriented conduct that is materially misleading and that plaintiff suffered injuries as a result of the alleged deceptive act or practice. And the attorney points out this is a consumer-oriented uh, law, meaning somehow I have to mislead the consumer as to a product. I have to tell you that my book is going to provide you with so-and-so information, and yet, effectively it doesn't. I'm going to talk about a product that has certain, certain attributes, but it doesn't. That has to be the basis for this usage of this law. And the point is, where did I do that? I mean, I conducted speech, commentary, criticism, satire toward you, the plaintiff, or toward my fans. But where did I have a sort of consumer-oriented product or service that I was lying about? How did I deceive the consumer? Saying that I voiced an opinion that you disagreed with is not deceiving the consumer as to a product or a service that I'm trying to sell. Second, 
Plaintiffs are California residents and they do not allege any transaction with Mr. Kakinos in New York. Again, this law is designed to protect against false advertisements in New York. So you've got to at least point out that something was done in New York. Again, nothing was alleged. Based on the foregoing, the complaint should be dismissed against Mr. Kokinos with prejudice without leave to amend. Mr. Kokinos should also be awarded his costs and disbursements. So all in all, a well-organized, well-thought-out, well-structured uh, response to the original complaint. Now, obviously, comparing this response to the to the original complaint is kind of like night and day in terms of quality and professionalism. But what do I think the court will do? I don't think they will dismiss it based on that. I think that this will absolutely serve as the basis for it. It's just not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen down the line. I think that just the way our, our courts work, the judge is going to give the plaintiff the benefit of the doubt. Say, you know what? Go back and amend uh, your complaint. Unless you want me to, to rule based on your original I'm going to, he's going to give him an opportunity to amend it. It's going to be up to uh, the plaintiff to decide. Do they want to amend it or do they want to go with it? If they're smart, they'll try to amend it. Frankly, if they're smart, they, may, they would want to drop Coquinos and Weber Shandley form it all together so that the, the judge can focus on the other issues. But nonetheless, it's obviously important to them because these are the only residents in New York, so they want to be part of the whole lawsuit. So part of it, the reason why they want to include it is be able to draw everybody else to New York but I don't think that the court is going to dismiss this case based on this today. It will be based on these these responses. They are really very well formulated. It's just gonna the court is going to allow the plaintiff to amend it first, maybe even a second time before it's going to reach that conclusion. It's going to give him as much benefit of the doubt as possible. This is it. If you have any complaint, any concerns, anything you want to talk about, just leave them down below. I'd love to talk to you. I'll see you next time. I go anywhere. You feel my mind, or you feel my mind. We could build a dream, start up something new. Let the old be dead, let the shadows leave my head. When the world is on your shoulders, and